gonna it's gonna be quite uh, quite quick, like five ten minutes. So basically, the presentation is gonna be uh, I'm gonna follow the landing page that we have made, and so later you can also go to the landing page to just see the text because the text is not clear. But anyway, to just see the stuff. So so well, that's the yeah that's the presentation for the project we did last week. So for those who we are not here or didn't know about this. So we did a, a project with so Anseu with Africa and Agustin and me and we also a third party which is like the organization between who is like putting a bit of fund between makers and collaborative spaces. So collaborative space is Anseu and the maker is well me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is called, uh, you have it here and you have the link also in the present in the landing page if you want makers exchange if you want to know more about this. And so we presented the project and uh, we were selected, uh, there was like uh, how many, 20 projects? 20 projects all around Europe. Okay, yeah. so 20 projects. So we are selected to do a project around rural, rural hacking and to kind of yeah, like promote rural innovation, uh, to develop communities, to create open source solutions so we could like create uh, like use innovation and technology to solve problems that you could have in a rural environment so a village also with a rural community for example here as digital nomad uh, people and uh, also to create something that would be replicable to different places so that was the main idea and we didn't really know what we were going to do at this point and so um, we did a few brainstorming, so one with, uh, here in Anseu, with, with Bas, the one we did uh, two weeks ago, and another one with uh, people from the village. And so we finally, so we had a few good ideas, and finally we chose to do uh, an idea that was mainly, uh, that ac actually was a problem here in Anseu, uh, and uh, that also the people from the village have, is the problem with the water measurement. Okay, because the water is handled by the village, it's not a, so it's like 200 people, no? A it's 100 more. counters, 300 people. Yeah, some so. It's very small and uh, the, the water is not handled by like a corporation or by the government, it's handled by the village. And so they have the... <laughs> so, like you all know how water is, is, is counted. You have a counter, a mechanical counter in front of your house and that's, you can see the numbers. But if you don't check them for six months, well, you don't see the water consumption. So there is someone from the village actually who is doing that manually with like a notebook and writing this every few months. And the problem is that uh, if there is a leak, which actually happened, if there is a leak, you don't know, well, you can't know if there is a leak and unless you, you have a shortage of water or if you check it uh, after six months and you see the number is already out of <coughs> the limit. So the idea was to, so that is, well, the problem. And so the, the solution was to simply create a use technology so we can measure uh, in real time. Real time is not necessarily every second, but every day or every few days, the water consumption. So find a technical technological solution to use. So existing system, which is the, the meter in front of the, of the houses. And so we can get the data faster and we can also use automation and code to well, kind of find if there is a leak. Because if you, for example, the water consumption is 100 liters per person per day. So we checked that actually with the counter here in Anseu. About 20 people, we found 2,000 liters per day, which, which was normal. So if you find that uh, one day you don't have 2,000, but you have 20,000 or 100,000, well, there is a leak somewhere. And so you can find it. After, so you still lose water, but you lose water for one day or one week, which is much better than to lose water every day for six months. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's gonna solve the that's we hope is gonna solve the problem of uh, Anseuki because the real problem is that there is a shortage of water in August September. Okay, because well it's raining a lot, but then in the summer less, and the the village is kind of like this, so the water is all going down, and then at some point there is no water. So if we can prevent that. It's good. Okay, so well, so last last week we have done the the, the project with so Agus and me, and well with the help of Africa <laughs> in the background for everything else, and so the final result is we have so this is mostly a proof of concept that we have. It's not really the final product, but it's something we know can work, and we have made a prototype and uh, some documentation for the future. So we have here 
Basically, this is gonna look like that, so it's not that clear, but you can also look in yeah. the landing page later. This is the dashboard, for example, in green, you have water consumption per day, and blue is like the cumulative, cumulative water consumption. So blue is what you read in the counter, and green is, well, the data you get, and if you see that you have a spike, a big one, then you see that there is a problem. Or if you have a negative number, like negative water consumption, you also see that something is wrong with the counter. So you can, this is the final result, and this is basically how we're gonna find there is a leak. And so, how it's working, well, this is just before. So, we're gonna get photos. We are, we are going to get photos of the actual counter, so this is, those two are photos that are going to go into the website, and then with a system to detect the number on the counter, and then to give that to, actually, to uh, the dashboard here. So the data here is going to go to the dashboard. And so far now, for proof of concept, we have just put the photo, and we have still to manually put the number, okay, but because we didn't have much time to do that, mm -hmm. and it's a bit more complicated. But basically, we have 100 counters, so 100 counters, it's like 10 minutes, okay, 10 minutes of work every three or five days, so it's still manageable. And so this is the... This is the back part, this is the cloud part, so everything is in the cloud with a front uh, web page. And now how are we gonna get a how are we gonna get the, the photos actually? Well we have so we have two prototypes for the photos and I'm not gonna go into the details because it gets more technical, but basically this this stuff here is like uh, if you know Arduino, this is close to Arduino, so microcontroller board with a battery and with a camera that is fixed. So it's so simply gonna wake up, take a photo of the counter, so we fix in front of the counter, and then uh, connect to Wi-Fi, and then send the data to uh, an API, which is well the, the interface between uh, the photo, between the this board, and between the code of the server to process the data. And well, we have a solution here with Arduino, a solution with Raspberry Pi. Okay, so you can check later, if you're, or you can ask more technical questions if you want to know the difference between the two. And we have also another option is, so for now we take a photo, but another option is also to directly measure the water in the pipe, in the tube, before the counter. So we would add another counter and directly get the water flow, okay? But this is still another prototype with another set of problems. Uh, so two main, yeah, two main ideas is to use photos or to directly measure the water and maybe link both. I mean, I think the best solution would be to link both. Mm -hmm. So we have better data to export. And, well, so on top of that, the project was not just to create something technical, but to create documentation uh, and code. So we have made everything open source. We have a GitHub link here. So you can find uh, the code for the prototypes, the code for the server. You can find a, we have made a technical doc, a PDF for like four pages of why we chose the different technical solutions and then how to improve from there, what are the future challenges and basically this was the phase number one, how to do phase number two which is to create a real prototype that can work uh, for any amount of time in a real situation and then the phase three which is scaling, so scaling hardware is basically if it works once, well how to make it work ten times and then how to make it work hundred times and then production, scale, etc. So if you're curious about that, you can check so ruralmakers.org. I'm gonna send also on Slack the, the page, and then if you go on the bottom, you have GitHub link, and then you have also Agus, Afri, and me. <laughs> if you want to ask question, and so well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> thank you, and so Agus and Afri, because yeah. either. Wow. I'm so proud. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a kid, eh? yeah, <laughs> they grow so fast. <laughs> 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 you too.